and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and joining me on the show today is fine art photographer Rutblees Luxembourg, who uses the City of London as her subject. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjber. So thank you so much for joining me on the show. I know you're very busy with photographing and you're a teacher as well, aren't you? You're a tutor? I'm a reader in urban aesthetics at the Royal College of Art in London, where I teach photography. Okay, while practicing photography as yes, well. Yes. How do you find the balance between the two of those? Well, it is amazing because I am exposed to young students who are developing new ways, new way of working with photography. So I actually can consider it as an extended research. Mm -hmm. It's not just me teaching them. It's also them introducing me to new ideas, new practices, new technological advancements. So it, it goes both ways. It's for me as much educational as I guess it is for the students. So at the moment you have an exhibition in the Museum of London, right? Yes. It's called yes. London Dust. Yes. Could you perhaps tell us a little bit about that body of work? Yes, um, London does deals with the, the changes of London, the rapidly changing uh, architectural environment of the city and how photography participates in that change, not just as coming after the fact, documenting the new city, but also imagining, forecasting this new city via the CGI, computer generated imagery. So these architects, developers, city planners use CGI, use the power of the pixel to, to show us what these buildings they are proposing will look like and they put them up all over the city, seducing us. Yeah. But um, they don't always happen. Some of these buildings have stalled and that's why I became interested how photography is sort of between past and future and how I can tether it to the presence, tether it to the here and now. I think you very much really managed to achieve that with these pictures because I mean you draw the viewer in with these images that are you know these CGI images but then there's something that resonates it resonates in the viewer's head that's like this isn't right and then once we look to the layers mm. you kind of start to see all these objects and maybe a bit of grit or dirt yes. and we realize that it's yes. not what it seems. Absolutely, and so I've used these CGI's basically as billboards. So the street is like my studio, and or like uh, backdrops. Like a studio backdrop. Like almost. a studio backdrop, and I uh, find props, and I find them in the street, like these heavy sand sacks. Yeah. And I put them in front of the CGI. So you're physically manipulating the scene yes. and moving things yes. around. Yes, yes, yes. So by creating uh, another layer for the viewer to understand this image is a construction. Mm. So what is it about the city that pulls you in? I mean, well, the city is changing all the time, it's so active and um, yeah, and I think photography is perhaps a tool trying to understand the city. A in, and B, photography allows me to be part of the city. With the camera I can go out, I have a reason to hang out at night in the city and do my long exposure, so it's like a, so a passport yeah. in you a way. You actively enjoy going and hanging yeah. out. And yes. Yeah, and all night time, well prim primarily night time. A lot of my work is at night, yes. Do you shoot with a purpose as in a goal at the end, you're thinking, well this is going to be a big installation, a big print, or this is going to be something smaller. Do you have that in mind while you're shooting? Yes, I have, uh, I have a project that I'm working on, that I've been researching, that I've been immersing myself in, and so the work I'm doing is all fitting into that project, yes. Yeah. What kind of cameras do you use? Do you use do you use film? Do you use digital? Yes, I use a Sina, which is a Swiss camera, and a 5x4 film. Wow, 5x4. And I bought this camera as a student second hand many years ago, and it served me well. Fantastic. <laughs> There's no need to rush out and buy the latest camera when... No, but obviously you have to buy film. Yeah, 
Is that proving to be a little bit more difficult? It's proving to be more and more expensive. Absolutely. In terms of your installations and in, in, in how you shoot, I recently saw in Photo London where we filmed, um, so we filmed actually your work there. It was the teaser, mm. uh, which is a, a collaborative effort, isn't it? Mm. Um, how often do you collaborate and is that really important in a, in a kind of way to, to guide your work? Yes, and it's become actually the key to a lot of my work. So the teaser was, a book I made with a philosopher, Alexander Garcia Dutman, and it was translated in a three-dimensional stage set for Photo London, so you could walk around it and then experience the book in a very different way. I think that's also similar how we experience the city. We walk around, we get sort of attached to something, something gets our attention. Mm. So I wanted to also reflect on that experience of being an, an urban dweller Very and bring that into, make a book into that. Yeah, so what some people might know uh, from popular culture anyway is the, is your two of your images used on the album covers uh, was the Streets album cover and for the Block Party album cover. Yeah. How did that come about? How do they find you? Do they commission you? Do you have an agent that acts for you? The Streets, so I made the work in 95 on Miami so six, seven years later, original pirate material came out and they found me and they thought this image really uh, supports the idea of what the streets were trying to do. So it worked very well yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't make the work for the album. The work existed and they thought this fits what we are trying to say. So they found you and it fits, their, fits the whole ethos of the yeah. album, I suppose. Yes. And would it have been the case then if if you didn't like the band, would you have said no? Um, you know, no one knew who the streets were at the okay. time. <laughs> they were really just starting. Yeah. But I, I liked the lyrics and there was something about it that was a bit like um, pirate radio. I mean, yeah. so it really fitted with the idea of a high rise where that kind of music was being made. Absolutely. So it made complete sense. I mean, it's fantastic that you're that you're working and that you you have this passion for what you do and that you in, you know, instill it in your students as well. You know, you have time for for teaching. Is teaching important to you to to give that kind of back to the community? Yeah, definitely. And I was taught by uh, Karen Noor, who is a oh, yeah. photographer and artist, and Olivier Richon. So these were practicing artists, photographers. Yeah. And I think that's quite important that the students have that access to people who are working. Who are active. Yeah. Did you study photography or did you shadow yes. a photographer? No, 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 I studied at what was called LCC, London College of Communication, yeah. with Sophie Rickard. We were on the same, in the same class. Wow. Did you always have a lust for photography or was it just, you know, an artistic drive and photography found you? I don't know. I started with political science, but I, I, I sort of had a sense that the image yeah. is proving extremely important and the image culture and it's it's it has become true we now live in a real saturated image culture but it's also we need to understand the image we're still super ignorant of what the image can do what it does what it's what it's different how it is constructed and how people read it differently i suppose yes absolutely the image is uh, still i think a really worthy topic of investigation oh, i'd absolutely agree with you there um, Listen, thank you so much for chatting pleasure, to me today. It's pleasure, It's been my pleasure and I can't wait to see more of your work. Wonderful, you will. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below. I do love getting your feedback. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you want to see some more videos, then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks and I'm going to see you again soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards or albums, use adoramapix.com.